Yo, 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 what up, though, Sean man, I'm Cotton? Back. We Champion, back. Champion, man, I'm back. I got my belt. <laughs> I'm ready for the 26. Yeah. Uh, Bosco 100 is me and you. I know you a gang member, but in the, in the ring, it's just me and you. Uh, you can't bring your crew with you. Yeah. Let's, let's get it on. Win, lose, or draw, baby. Nah, but, hey, but yeah, nah, for sure. It's, it's official. Hey, ex explain to me, why Bosco? Like, how, how did this come about? Um, Well, shit, Charleston, he's getting a big bag for a fight. Okay. And, uh... You know, I've been boxing for a minute just for a hobby. Yeah. Because the, the music shit was so stressful for me. So I believe when, I believe you need a hobby um, away from business. Yeah, for sure. Just to get back right mentally. So I was just boxing for like two, three years uh, with Chris. Shout out to Chris. That's my trainer. Um, He's pro. Uh, He's from uh, Louisiana. Okay. Monroe, Louisiana. Shout out to Chris. And uh, I would be up there every day. Charleston. Told Charleston to come up there. And Charleston was already getting offers for a celebrity boxing match. But Charleston put me on his card. Mm. So so they gave me the oop. Um, and, man, they gave me a, a – I'm making like $4,000 a minute. Oh, shit. Yeah, so. So who, uh, who is Charleston fighting? He's fighting this dude named Swade. Swade okay. is a dude from Louisiana as well. Okay. Um, But Charleston was supposed to fight Aunt Glizzy. Aunt Glizzy kind of was like wanting too much. But with me, it's just about getting in there and – you know, because at first, Jake Paul, Logan Paul was a joke. Yeah. But like I said, you just, once you get in there and you don't make it about the money, the opportunities get bigger and bigger. Yeah. So with me, um, my bag isn't as big as Charles. Charles is getting a lot, like six figures. Okay. Um, But they offered me a bag. It was last minute, so I just took it. Like, let's do it. Like, fuck it. Um, yeah. Like, to me, it's not even about the money. It's about the opportunity. What, what could happen off of that, so. Now, preparing for this fight, looking at Bosco, because Bosco did a fight before, right? Yeah, he did like two or three. Two or three. So you uh -huh. get to study. Do you watch film on him? Uh, Not really. Like, I see stuff. People send me stuff, but I don't really. It ain't. It, nah, not really. And a lot of people saying he can't fight, but you can't underestimate nobody. Yeah, because Tate just one punch. One punch. Yeah. One punch. And I mean, uh, he has viral fights to him, you know, back in the day and shit like that. But I'm not going to underestimate him. Nah, I told Chicago King Dave he was fighting. He was like, what? But Chicago King Day, he said, like, man, Sean is a businessman, but he don't see that dog in you. He feel uh, like Bosco ain't going to get it, get one over you because he, he, he known as a street nigga. Uh, street niggas get beat up every day. <laughs> Real shit. Like, your hood don't make your hands good. And I'm not acting like I'm just super tough. Like, yeah. I didn't grow up in the streets. Like, like I said, growing up, I grew up with a lot of different niggas who met up and fought and shit like that. But I was so girl crazy. I ain't about to meet up with no niggas and fight. I've yeah. gotten in plenty of fights, though, but I ain't no super tough guy. Yeah. But I think I think I could beat up the average guy now, like in the street. Yeah. Like, just by being in there every day, repetition, you know, like real street guys don't, they don't have the real form and, you know what I'm saying? They they don't have the real body movement and footwork. Yeah. Like, boxing is boxing is footwork and the hips. It's all in the, it's all in the hips and conditioning. Yeah. Like, you could beat somebody, that you could beat the toughest nigga in the world if he's not conditioned. You that outlast them. It's all about what's in the gas tank. So uh, I'm not. I, I I think a lot of people need to stop thinking that. Like a lot of people, they this ain't think, a brawl. This ain't no. Yeah, good and then brawl. people just think, oh, street nigga versus uh, blogger. Yeah, you know it don't work like that. So your hood don't make your hands good. Um, and I just feel like, uh, um, shout out to Bosco. He's a hustler. Yeah, you know he been getting in these fights, getting his checks. But um, I, I feel like I'm gonna knock him out. Okay, how long how's, how long is the rounds? I mean, I mean, how many uh, rounds? Three was minute, it? three minute, uh, three minute, three three rounds, three minutes. Exhibition. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do y'all wear the full headgear? Yeah, yeah. Love? This 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 company, yes. Okay. Um, and uh, twelve ounce gloves. Got you. So I feel like I'm gonna knock him out. Um, <laughs> I feel like he doesn't have nothing for me. But like I said, I'm not going in there cocky. Yeah. Um, I gotta sell the fight, so of course I'm gonna say that. So August 26 is going August down. August 26 is going down. A lot of people from the West Coast. A lot of people flying in. It's crazy. Pay per view. People buying paper. Like I ain't like this. Shit's crazy, but it's fun to me. <laughs> like it's not one of them things to where as though I feel like I'm under pressure or if I lose my career's over. I that's why I never try to act too tough. Yeah. Like anything, because when you take an L, look what happens on the internet. That's true. But when you don't act super tough and you take an L, man, you can laugh at yourself. Yeah. So I, I I never wanted that pressure on myself, man. And um, I want people to think I'm a businessman. I don't want to walk around and people don't approach me because I I think I'm tough. Like that shit's played out. That tough shit's played out. Like, yeah. I'm trying to get some money. So 
do you feel like this is a one and done thing, or are uh, you gonna just look at your performance? Nah, here? if I beat if I beat Bosco, I'm gonna um, try to try to fight Logan or Jake Paul. Oh damn, we gonna try to go up that far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then after I beat them, I'm gonna I'm call out Canelo. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm I'm shooting for the stars, man. Hey, no wrong with it. Hey, no wrong with it. Um, speaking of boxing, um, Errol Spence. Yeah. You watching man. that, like, how did you take that? Because the city was kind of down after that um, loss. Man, uh, true champion, true warrior. Uh, I feel like, shit, he kept fighting. He, he didn't give up. He fought to the end. Uh, I mean, if, if you hear around the city, he was one of them guys that was beating people last from a kid. So yeah. a lot of people were stunned because they never saw him like that. Yeah. You know, but every dog has his day. Um, a lot of people thought he was high. I think he was drained. Um, he looked like it. He looked drained. I don't think he was high per se, but um, he looks drained. But um, everybody has something to say. But uh, people don't realize like how like boxing is a serious. You you can't play boxing. Like it's a serious serious sport. Uh, and uh, you know Floyd May Floyd Mayweather fucked up the sport of boxing. That undefeated shit. Yeah. Everybody wants everybody to be undefeated, but they hurt boxing because now you got a lot of fighters who not fighting each other because this fight is a threat. Or this guy could possibly upset this guy. Mm. We just, I just wanted to see a good, a good fight. Like people was asking me, like, who you got? Like, man, I just want to see a good fight. But I know sometimes you bet. Did you bet? I on didn't this bet fight? at all. Hell no. Okay. It's a 50 50 fight. Yeah. If you would have asked 10 people that day, it would have been 50 50. Would have been Spence Earl. I mean, Bud Earl, Bud Earl. Like, wow, I, hell no. Mm. Um, but it, it, you know, I think we're the same age. So, you know, I've, I've been in the city since I seen him come up and, uh, I kind of felt bad for, you know, watching the fight. Like, after a while, like, getting seen, seeing him get beat that bad was like, damn. <laughs> nah, yeah, real no, real shit. Sure, for nah, sure. not no funny shit, but like, damn. Like, Do you uh, think it was bad enough? Like, Stephen A. Smith went to a point where he was saying, like, Earl Spence may need to retire. No, nah, I don't think it's that he, bad. I mean, he won two fights after the wreck. Danny Garcia, Ugas. Um, and then um, I think... Uh, the world doesn't want to see a rematch, but I mean it's in the contract. Yeah. And for two, um, we want to see if it's gonna be different at 154. Mm. So I think at 154, um thing is if 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 Crawford beat him that bad again, it's kind of like I don't know. A lot of people think if Craw if they were to fight 10 times, Crawford would win all 10. Because that fight was so lopsided, but I don't know. It's in the contract, and um, do you want to see a rematch? I don't want to see a rematch. Yeah, I don't want to see a rematch. I want to see Spence fight Boots. Okay. Um, uh, Jerron Ennis Boots from, yeah. from Philly, great fighter, S so much skill. Um, but we we seen what we had to see that fight. I think uh, I think this. I think if he loses to Crawford twice in that fashion, it's, it'll, it'll hurt his legacy. Yeah, hurt him. So I just feel like we should just go on to the next, and uh, we saw we saw it. When you see like all the his highest face look, how bad it swell up in the blood and all that. Because usually, usually Spence is the one fucking up eye sockets yeah. and shit. So it was just like, damn. But like I said, everybody, all these casuals had have, have something to say. But once you get in there, it's 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 different. Yeah. So I just me boxing for the time I've been boxing, it's kind of like all right. Like I would I wouldn't talk shit because I mean Spence could beat everybody up in this room. Yeah, that's, that's Real true. Real talk. That's true. That's real shit, but uh, it's just different when you get in there. Now, he, he had a chance to bring out um, Dallas Rising Star, Big X, the plug, uh -huh. walking out. Yeah. Um, how did you think that looked for the city? It sounded like the audio was messed up. To keep it real with you, I was I was going live that night on YouTube. Okay. So I did. I wasn't paying attention. I'm We on the computer trying to go live, and yeah. we did the watch party shit. And then um, I didn't really, I didn't really, I wasn't really paying attention to the to the walkout for real. Gotcha. And then um, I think my nephew said something about Eminem, and we was like, oh shit! But I didn't really pay attention. But I think that's dope. I yeah. think that's dope that that he he picked Big X a plug. Clearly the the hottest uh rapper in the city. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, but the Eminem shit is just like, hey, you, you gotta have a Detroit that. nigga in your pocket, man. man I'm you telling you, you can't you can't top that. Like I don't think that. You can't, you can't, and I just like the whole way, like how he, like he just had everything together. He had the net, the the net outfit, yeah. and then it was just so thought out. Uh, definitely a classic. Got you. Now, 
since the last time we talked, um, Complex dropped a list mm-hmm. of pretty much the most influential personalities, yeah. as you can say, um, in hip hop. Yeah. And Joe Budden, number one, academics was two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Who else was on that list? Uh, Charlemagne. Number, Charlemagne, three. Uh, uh, Gillian Wallow, four. Yeah, Math Hoffa. Nori, five. Let's see who Jay, else. Yeah. Kasanet, Carisha, please. Yeah. Sean Cotton, not even in the top 25 on the complex list. Right. What happened? I don't know. They hit me up like three weeks before that, wanting to do an interview, and I didn't. It's not that I didn't do it on purpose. I just didn't get a chance to. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if that's the reason. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm, I'm not as vocal as the others as mm. far as opinionated online and shit. Yeah. Maybe because Say Cheese is bigger than the Sean Cotton brand. I don't know. Uh, yeah. They don't owe me nothing though. Um. I feel like on that list, I'm, I'm top three, top five though as far as, um, viewership, as far yeah. as influence. So. Um, I'll leave that up for the people to say. I'm not one of them people who, uh, it was real East Coast based too. Like if you look back at it, most yeah. of them people are, are from the East Coast. So That's I true. understand uh, Complex is, a East, is, is, is on the East Coast. So um, if you go back and look at that list, how many people were in the Southern region? So, I mean, if you, Shit, just, none of them, really. yeah, if you just go back and look, I think Adam is from the West Coast. And um, Vlad. Vlad is from the East Coast though. Oh, okay. Yeah, Vlad. I mean, Vlad, the headquarters is in New York, so. Yeah, because you got Ebro, Angie Martinez, yeah, all that Angela is, all Lee. That ca- ca- case and that is from New York, like, and I understand it. Um, but uh, you ask anybody on the street, I mean, that's that that opinion matters more to me. Yeah. So, than the list any day, so. Is that what kind of sparked your interest to go into the now, get in front of, more in front of the camera with the podcast? Yeah. And things of that nature? Can- yeah, as, as I'm leaving music, uh, yeah. Um, and the internet is changing. Uh, so, I mean, you see you see all these streamers and podcasters getting NBA deals now. Facts. Like $100 million deals, like Facts. people you, you don't even know, but they have a crazy pocket yeah. of fans. So, that's what really got me into it. Not me trying to prove complex anything. It's just like, all right, bet. I got a fan base. I got a personal fan base. Let me start using my voice more. Yeah. Like, there's been a lot of times where I was accused of things or allegations. Kevin Gates swinging on me. Yeah. Gucci Mane cussing me out. Finesse two times threatening me. And I just never said nothing because I just would sit behind the Say Cheese brand and just continue to pump out content. And I never got to, to when Darrow said I, I fucked him over, when all these rappers said I fucked him over. I never got to tell my side of the story. Yeah. So that's what's really making me start it up. And uh, it's going to be big. It's going to be one of the biggest podcasts in the world. We already locked in like Birdman and um, big, like huge names. Man. That's hard. Huge name. I'm trying to get huge names like Michael Jordan's son, Obama's daughter. There you go. Like I want to, I want, and still do the Say Cheese interviews on top of that. Got you. Um, I got offered a big deal. Um, It was, it was in the million dollars yeah. range and I turned it down. Um, simply because uh, it would have stopped the Say Cheese interviews. Mm, so gotcha. I don't want anything that's going to get in the way of my other brand. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Now, do you have a name for the podcast? Yeah, it's called Clean Sweep. Clean Sweep. Yeah, like uh, like a basketball series, 4-0, Clean Sweep. Got gotcha. you. Something short and sweet. Okay. Don't got to be nothing too crazy. Now, is this one of those things, are you going to be mostly live streaming? Are this pre-records? Are you uh, it depends. Like- um. It's gonna be pre-recorded. It's gonna be pre-recorded, but we're gonna go live. Got gotcha. you. Uh, I'm gonna have different co-hosts too. It's not gonna just be me and Rahi or me and Rainwater or me or you, and yeah. me or Jay Hayes or me or Aunt Glizzy or me or FYBJ Man. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be so random. Yeah. But it, we're gonna have the biggest guests on there. Now, shout out to you because you always pop. I I think maybe generational talent is overstated, but. You do change the culture when you interview people. Like, you got Charleston on the platform. Yeah. He changed the culture and the narrative on, on the internet and the algorithm. Mm-hmm. Now you got FYBJ, man. Yep. You got everybody and hit that's different. What I was do your tell, homework. Like, Big Chief, dumbass. Like, <laughs> he went on interviews talking about Sean Cotton, he ain't nobody. He, uh, he don't even look at money. Look at Gilly and them, who they interview. Look at... He ain't drink champs. It's like, bro, you're so outdated. Like, 
you don't you don't make you don't make in the interview space you make more money having reoccurring guests. Yeah, for sure. Like I can interview Lil Baby, the baby, I can interview Kanye West tomorrow, but if they never come back on my channel, how am I benefiting from that? Yeah. So it's just like people think that, but it's like, oh, Sean only interviews. But I can interview the same, my same five reoccurring guests and do way more views than a lot of these podcasts. Yeah. But I'm not one of them type of dudes who I've never been like that. Like Say T's never been that type of brand to where as though I'm out looking for the biggest artists. I'm not trying to interview Ice Spice. I'm not trying to interview um uh I'm trying to think of uh, uh I'm not trying to interview fucking Lil Baby and them. No disrespect to them. Yeah. But that's just not gonna do my my brand no justice. Like my interviews are based off like getting people off the street and t- and turning them into you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's always been my brand. So why go outside of that blueprint? Now on the podcast level, it may be a little bit like that to where I get people that are on that level, but the Say Cheese platform never been, I'm chasing the hottest, biggest thing. Nah, nigga, I got a platform and I'm going to go find somebody with a story Yeah. and I'm going to keep bringing them back and we're going to run money up together and I'm going to pay you every time you come and I'm going to make money off you every time you come. We're going to eat together. With Lil Baby and Da Baby, how, how, we're not, our relationship's not growing. Cause if you look at these big interviewers, they rarely come back and fuck with the, the platform. That's true. So that's why I create, I don't like to say create, but I find people that have a story. I find people that have a story and we build. Now, FYBJ, man, we talk on the phone and it's bigger than just interviewing each other. Yeah. So, yeah, when, he, when Big Chief said it, I'm like, this nigga's so outdated. <laughs> Like, I understand him, like, but he's just outdated. Like, that's the old hustle. That's the old interview hustle to uh, wait for people to come to the city and yeah. then interview them. And you got to wait for them to come back four years later. Then by that time, they run over with. Like, that's that's old. Like, niggas is, that's what I'm saying. Like, people are stuck in, like, the 2013 method, like, of of just going off cloud and going off who hot. Like, that shit's dead. Like, yeah, I'm going to cre- create my own people and we're going to run that shit up. How, how did and, you- and, and I don't hold my people back. FYBJ man went to no jumper. Adam22 offered him a job. FYBJ man, real nigga. He called me. Hey, should I take it? I said, yes, bro. Well, how much are they offering you? He was like, man, they talking something big. I said, bro, take it. Just make sure Adam don't fuck with your, your personal platform. Like, I'm not one of them niggas. When Charleston White, when, when he blew up on my platform, hey, man, Vlad calling me. Can, well, not can I, but he was like, should I do it? I was like, bro, I think you should do it. I'm not holding back nobody who come fuck with me through my through my shit. Yeah. I want them to get big so they can come back and tell their stories. And like, I'm not I'm not holding back nobody. Um, and I could easily hate on these people and be like, man, fuck them. No, I only stay on say cheese, but why would I do that? Yeah. Like, nah, nigga, they offering you a job. Go get that. Just make sure Adam don't fuck with your personal brand. So you can go home and still do your shit and then go over here and now you making money. Doing two different things. Facts. So that's why I don't think people understand like the new internet hustle. People are so stuck, bro. Like they in the twilight zone. How did you link with um, FYBJ, man? Because Chicago King Dave threw me the oop. Uh-huh. I, I want to say probably like two or three months before he appeared on Say Cheese. Yeah. Uh, he was like, hey, Big D, you want to interview FYBJ, man? I ain't know who it was. He yeah. was like, hey, bro, just throw him a couple of dollars. Yeah. What you want to throw him? I was like, how much? He said this amount. I said, cool. So the, that was on a Friday. That Monday, I called FYBJ, man. I was like, yeah, um, King Day, Chicago King Day said you want to do an interview. But now he was like, yeah, that was my price then. I want a 1000 mm. I was kind of like, nah, I can't. Yeah. I, I don't even know who you is. Right. So next thing you know, he don't say cheese. I'm like, damn, is that the one King David? King Dave's like, nigga, I told you. I told you. And he, now he off. Yeah. Uh, he kept reaching out to V. Okay. And V had hit me up one time, and I was like, yeah, I'm cool on it. Because at that time... He was like dissing King Von real heavy. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I'm cool on it. Cause at that time he was like still in like rapper mode, which wasn't a problem, but it was just like, uh, so I interviewed him one time, it did pretty decent. And then I interviewed him the second time, it didn't do good. And then um uh then the third time we did it and it just it hit off. It did okay. Yeah. And then the fourth time, he had the blue HIV shirt on, and it went dumb. <laughs> and uh, every interview, it just kept going up and up. And uh, 
I didn't really know he was homeless at the time. Like at this time, I'm probably giving him like, I think I only paid him like five hundred dollars, and mm. then um, the next time it just it just shit, shit was stupid. I found out he was he was really homeless. Uh, he was at the U-Haul place trying to get a truck back to one of the cities that he's living in. Oh damn! And I threw him a couple dollars. I was like, "Hey, bro, take this money. This for our next interview next month. Don't yeah. don't don't run off on me. You better come. We better do it." And then we just we just locked in ever since. Now, seeing where he at now. Did you see him becoming that big? As big as he's becoming now as far as internet personality. In the beginning, nah. In the beginning, I'm just thinking like, but he's so smart with it though. Like he he he's super smart. Uh he's super smart. It's a character we never seen before from a place that everybody loves and is infatuated with, yeah. like Chicago. He has valid stories. So the stories he's telling you about John Wick, and then I go interview John Wick. He said this shit was true. Yeah. So it was just like everything he says is valid, and I think that's why people fuck with him because he was around so many legends who died in Chicago. So um, that's why I think people fuck with him. And on top of that, he's really funny. How do you um, think Chicago feel about him? I think Chicago doesn't like it. I think uh, I think they don't like how he's bringing people together. Mm. He's on IG Live with like four different sets. Like that's never been done before. Yeah, and I think. Uh, I think he's turning around. I think a lot of people in Chicago are starting to pick up cameras now because of him. Mm. You know, they're seeing what he's doing. He's 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 being able to take care of his family on YouTube. So that's what it's about is me giving him an opportunity. Now he put on Tay Savage. Tay Savage got his niggas. It's just everybody's eating now. Yeah. Everybody's everybody's happy. That's what it's about. Not me going to go interview fucking uh, Kendrick Lamar and Drake. <laughs> what the fuck is uh, Big Chief Tyree? Stupid. <laughs> that nigga's so dumb. Now, speaking of Chicago, they've been under under heat recently um, with the um, Lil J video. Uh-huh. Uh, you interviewed Lil J. Damn, Lil J. Why you lie to me like that, dog? What a camera at? Why, <laughs> why, you, why you do me like that, dog? <laughs> Lil J, come on, bro. You could have just kept that shit a buck, man. Yeah. You re <laughs> you re do you think that's him in the footage? <sighs> I think it's, I, I, man, with that specific clip of the dude sitting on his lap, Yeah, I don't know. It's still kind of like, it's still wiggle room. I can say that. Yeah. But when five, four or five different transmissions coming out saying that, it's allegations, it's kind of like, people just don't lie like that. Like the Red Montana girl just went to DJU. Yeah. And then the other girl is doing like stories on them. But let's put it like this. People got a reason to lie. If it's going to get them in front of the camera and give them three minutes of fame just on the lie. I said that too. Because Sydney Star lied on Ch Chingy. She did. She did. That's why I said it's wiggle room. But it's just like, man, it's, 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 it's going to be hard to overcome. I don't yeah. want to put that on nobody. But I just feel like if you are, just be yourself. Like, look at the Lil Wap kid. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with him I'm from Chicago. Yeah. He fully turned a woman. Yeah. Like, and nobody's laughing. I mean, in the beginning, people will laugh at you, ha, 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 ha. But after a while, it's like, you get tired of laughing. Like, you just got to accept people who they are. Why, why you think somebody like Lil J would be so adamant about lying? Is it that King yelling them would cut him off? I think it's your music. Yeah, now you're lying in your music. Hmm. Now you're lying about everything you rap, rap, rap about. Now everything you're saying is, now your rap career is done because now we can't trust you anymore. Yeah. Like, we can't trust you. So, uh... I just think that's why he's lying. And in a place like Chicago, like one of the toughest cities, they ain't trying to, they're not going to accept that. Like you didn't diss so many dead ops and dead people. Yeah. And you got, you got shit you hiding? Like that shit is like wow. Like, What about these videos with Vaughn and like these jail videos that's being released? Uh, Like, you know, like Vaughn or Lil J in, in prison. Or I think with FBG Butters, all of them, like they cameras... The body cams from the officers in jail. Like, who you think is releasing those? That I don't video? know. I, I, I kind of think it's somebody with it. I kind of think it's like, it got to be somebody who's young and hip to what's like, I think it's one of them rappers in Chicago mm. on the shh, making good money on YouTube right now because all them shits is hidden. hidden. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever it is, it's somebody young, hip, um, I don't know if they have a website where you can buy it or download it, mm -hmm. or somebody in the system. So uh, it may be like a correction officer who's selling it to somebody. 
Yeah. Or or a cousin or somebody, whoever that is, is making some good change, man. Yeah. And uh, I, I know they're young and hip. It ain't nobody that's older. And it's somebody that's within the culture. I guarantee you it's one of them rap niggas. Now, I know 1090 Jake brought up the Freedom of Information Act. I uh-huh. think it was him. Was saying like. Uh, public information. It's public information. So if you know the inmate name, full name, you can request information. They got to give up all videotape of the person. Yep. So. That's what I was thinking that too when I, when he said that uh, 1090 Jake said that um, I was like damn okay it is a, yeah. a somewhere on the black web where you could go get that you know it's just nobody knows now 1090 Jake was recently on No Jumper mm-hmm. and he brought up the fact that he thought maybe you had an issue with him because of him I guess exposing spot on no God issue of no issue with 1090 Jake um, I he said that twice already um, I have no issue with 1090 Jake. Um, I mean, a lot of people have an issue because he's white in the black culture. Yeah, it's like he's he, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, shit, you gotta understand. Spot him, got him was my artist at the time. Double platinum record, like nigga, the Lil Dirk shit was real. When I said that Lil Dirk uh gave him back the hundred thousand, yeah, that shit was real. Like that fucked up his career. But it's not ten ninety Jake's fault. That paper was leaked by somebody in Jacksonville two years before. We even knew who 1090 Jake was. Mm. Um, so it's not like 1090 Jake just exposed it. He just confirmed it. And people, you know, 1090 Jake's word is law to a lot of people. Yeah. So I kind of threw, um, I kind of said it was a statement. He made a statement, but he didn't snitch per se. But I guess that's the same thing depending on who you yeah. ask. I don't know. So in your in your opinion, did he snitch? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, based off what people think snitching is. Yeah. Um, if a police come in there and you say, "Man, Colton got a gun in the bathroom," yeah, that's snitching. Got you. Um, but you know, I don't put myself in them situations though. So, so what? At, what after the snitching stuff came out with Spot Him Got Him? When did y'all separate? When did you stop? Uh, we never fell out. Uh, okay. Me and Spot Him Got Him never fell out. Uh, he dropped. What's crazy is, see, Gucci had wanted to sign him. I remember that. And Gucci called me a broke ass. He said broke ass blog or bloke, broke ass something. Yeah. And this was because Spot'em got him at the time. He didn't have no money. This was like right before the pan, like right before the pandemic. I invested like 20000 in the Spot'em got him at that time. Uh, shooting videos, Airbnbs, clothes. You know how that shit go. Yeah. Um, but Spot'em got him went broke. Well, he didn't have no money. So I guess Spot'em Got him was going around telling people that I'm with Sean. It's, it was moving slow. Yeah. So Gucci wanted to sign him. I didn't let Spot'em Got him out the deal yet. Um, I didn't let him go to, to Gucci, man. I felt like Spot'em Got him was a star, and I wasn't going to let him out of the contract. I just would partner up with somebody. Yeah. So I partnered up. At this time, it was just me and him. Me and Spot'em Got him, no partner. So I had at that time I had a partnership in Miami with Say La Vie. They signed, they got Sexy Red now, Boston Red. They do, they are, they are. Um, they had Tay Money, Cash Page, you know that whole thing, yeah. BKBs, that whole wave. Um, Baby Youngin. So I had partnered up with 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 them, with with Spot'em Got Him. The next song he recorded was Beatbox. Mm. The next, so if he would have recorded Beatbox and just me and him. I would have probably we would have probably made like twenty million. That's a double platinum record. Yeah, for that sure. was the biggest song during the pandemic. The biggest record. For sure. The next song after the partnership, he recorded beatbox. I was like, what the fuck? I made good money off of it, yeah. which it's still more old to me. But it's just like, if it was just me and him. And so how soon soon after beatbox came out that the allegations resurfaced. That man, while it was going up, okay, I was in. The, we was in the Miami office, sweating bullets. Like, what the fuck? Like, it's going stupid. It's everywhere. The song is like, is like top ten. Like, I, I don't know. If, like, I don't know if y'all ever been a part of a top. Like, records are hits. Yeah, a top ten record is different. Like, when you go outside, that's all you hear. It's like. It's like money everywhere. You yeah. just stream money everywhere. <laughs> like stream money galore. Like radio, 
TikTok kids doing, you seeing t- yeah, kids the in the dead. hood, like, like real shit. I'm in Miami, kid, Liberty City projects, kids, like, record, like, it's everywhere. And then the allegations come out. And mm. then we in the office all looking at each other like, the nigga that they say you snitched on, call that nigga right, well, if he call you from jail or whatever, like, get niggas on the phone, try to, like, try to get this shit cleared, like, yeah. So it lived though. The song lived. It's double platinum, regardless. Yeah. But it's just like him as an artist, cause he has the look, he has the drip. He got you don't gotta be the best rapper anymore. Yeah. You just gotta have a, the essentials. You gotta have a lifestyle. You gotta and he looks like a little troll doll. <laughs> yeah, for so sure. So I just think that his his career would have last longer if that shit didn't happen. But I'm not mad at 1090 Jake. That shit was like 1090 Jake clarified that shit like two years after, bro. I'm not mad at him. Yeah. He getting this, he doing what he doing what he do. Get your money. Now, Adam did bring up the fact that y'all was supposed to have done an interview, but y'all hadn't done one. And he made a little joke just saying, like, well, maybe is you don't like white people. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but what but what's the what's, Damn, what's the, that's why, crazy? Why haven't you done an interview with Adam? Um, I just haven't been to LA. I haven't gotcha. been to LA. Um that's really it. I haven't been to LA since I told him I was gonna do it. Um, I think the furthest west I went was Phoenix. That was because of the Eagles Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I haven't been to LA. Cause that's one of your least favorite places, right? Uh, it's just a lot. Of, so many people die. PNB Rock, uh, Pop Smoke. So many people out there die. So I was like, I'm chilling. Yeah. Um, and you know, LA, you gotta move a little different. But I don't know. I just it just be so many people in the office. At No Jumper, I just be like, you been on No Jumper before, right? So just be like, uh, I don't really know. And then me, me being like me being cool with Charleston, yeah, it's just like I don't know how people feel. So I just been kind of. It's not that I'm trying to wait. I just haven't been there. Yeah, but it's like I I haven't rushed there because of those reasons. Yeah, but I did a Vlad interview. I did, did Vlad. I'm like, waiting for you to partner with at. That's gonna be cool. That's gonna be that's lit. gonna be cool. Uh. We kind of already confirmed. See, I haven't been in New York. I just yeah. had a kid. Congrats so on that. So it's just like, yeah. So it's like I haven't even been in New York to do it. Yeah. Um. So that that shit is like, come on, bro. Now y'all just starting race wars and shit. I, I think he was joking. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, I haven't been to New York or I haven't been to any of those places. I'm about to though. Now speaking of Charleston, Live Nation. Congrats, the comedy show here you're inviting me out to. Sold out. Sold out with two days, right? Yeah, we're actually, the other day we're doing on Labor Day. So, okay, got you. Yeah. Labor Day. Um, He's on tour right now with um, T.K. Kirkland. T.K. Kirkland. Live Nation Live tour. Live Nation. Where do you see Charleston now? Is he is he hitting his pinnacle? Is there more room to go? Like, where do you see Charleston? What's your prediction? I think people are starting to like Charleston now. Hmm. And that's kind of like, eh, like, that's not, that's not like, I just think, um, you know, people like new too. Yeah. Um, I don't think he fell off. Like his numbers, so we actually about to drop an interview tomorrow. Got you. His numbers, his numbers are crazy. The last interview we did was crazy. I just think he's not new anymore. And you know the internet is so new, new, new. Yeah. What's next? We're not even talking about the Titanic shit no more. Yeah. We're not talking about a lot of the shit that happened just recently. Cause everything is what's new. Everybody's looking for the new Charleston White. Mm. Um, but I don't think Charleston White's I think he is about to get in acting. He was just on the Uzi shit. Yeah. Like like how? Like I think I think he I just I just think a lot of people are starting to like him now. Gotcha. You know, at the beginning it was controversy. You know, controversy sells. So, so has the shock value gone away? Like when he say something crazy, Man, it's not a shock no more? Is that what it is? I just think he just said, who else is there to say, who else is there to call a bitch? Who else is there to call a hoe? Yeah. Like he didn't test it. The most gangster niggas, the niggas with the toughest reputations, the J Princes, the like the cartels, the, he just said, fuck everybody. So I feel like what's next? Like, but every time people say he fell off, he does something else. Yeah. Got a fight coming up. You never know what he going to pull off. He was just on Uzi tape. That's the biggest tape of the year. Yeah. So. Now, was it true that he was trying to fight Boosie? To get he Boosie was fight? trying to fight Boosie. Boosie declined. Mm. Boosie declined. His management told him nah. Yeah. So. Um, so Who else turned down the fight was Charleston? Uh, and Glizzy didn't really t- turn it down. It was just a money thing. 
really, Charleston wanted Boosie bad. Mm. He wanted him bad, but it was a few other people too that we tried to get. Oh, the Island Boys said no. <laughs> All right. He wanted the Island Boys. Both of them. Yeah, he wanted both of them. They said <laughs> no. They stopped hitting them back. Um, I know Soldier Boy called recently. Mm. I don't know if that's for me or Charleston though. Got gotcha. you. Um, but uh, Soldier Boy called recently, and uh, that I think that would be perfect for Charleston because of this this the spray shit. Yeah, that's that's a million dollars right there. ASAP. Damn. Yeah. But what? I don't feel like he fell off though. You, you, do you feel like he plateauing? He just kind of leveling off? Yeah, you know, when when you just going like this, people like to say you fell off. If yeah. you're not going up, like, shh, yeah, people think you fell off. But he's just coasting right now. Got you. And I feel like that's cool. I mean, people didn't expect Charleston to even do touring. No, nah, so sure. Like, that night when all those people came out to see him, people didn't expect that. He really, people underestimated Charleston. People thought he was going to be one of them dudes who was just on YouTube and just... Just, 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 just go, you know, just float, just float away. Yeah. But he's torn. And multiple, he's not a local joker. This nigga did Detroit, this nigga did four shows in Jacksonville, turned around and did three shows in South Carolina, 9,000, 7,000, 4,000 a pop. <clears throat> it sounds like some good money to me. He living. Um, speaking of Charleston, um, recently I had a chance to interview Yo, camera girl V. Uh-huh. Uh, the girl V, as people know her. Um, and she came out about her situation with Charleston, how they all fell apart. Yeah. Her being your camera girl and being an employee for you and so close to you, how did you handle that whole situation between her and Charleston? Man, I don't have nothing to do with that. See, I used to interview Charleston like every, maybe every, maybe twice a month. Mm -hmm. She would come interview him every time. You know me, yeah. I do my interviews digitally. I'm not physically there. Yeah. So she would be there. It would just be her and him and whatever, whoever else was in the room. So I guess she was around so much, he took her under his wing. I never referred her to him. I never was like, yo, Charleston, I got this girl named V and she's, no, she was just there. She's professional. So I guess they built the bond. Gotcha. I don't. And, you know, everybody was like, Sean, Sean, why would you do that? Why? I have no control of what she does. I don't ask her about her personal life. I don't even like talking to my employees every day. Yeah. I like for every all the work to be on the table. Let's get it done. Hit me up if you have a question or if we need to, you know what I'm saying? I don't even, I'm introverted. You know that. Yeah, I don't. Sure. I don't like talking to people every day. Um, I be in my bubble. So I never asked her. You know, about the rumors that I heard about them, the this, this, or that. I never, I never asked, um, I never was in their business. I heard things, I heard I, some things to be not true. Some people said it was true. I have no idea about uh, that whole situation. Yeah. Um, do, do you feel like I went too far naming the title Surviving Charleston? Nah, man. YouTube is all about clickbait. Everybody clickbait. Yeah. But, Man, everybody, I, I clickbaited today on interviews. <laughs> everybody clickbait, man. Everybody wants, people know, I mean, come on, man. People, when they click the video, they uh, they should understand where you were going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is just clickbait, bro. We want people to watch our shit. Uh, how do you deal with the backlash from that? Because, you know, I've been catching some heat. Now that, you know, my, the channel is growing. Yeah. And it's, you know, saying, I'm getting that pushback now. Yeah. You know, I, I got people threatening. Yeah. You know, want to shoot me, want to kill me, want to yeah. run out the city. Yeah. All because of a a title that's what's or wrong a clip. With black, that's what's wrong with the black community now. We can't communicate. Mm. You got a problem with me? Come sit down on the camera and tell me, tell me, cuss me out on camera. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of people who were upset with me. Big folks, Bandman guy. Bandman Kevo's uh, manager. Yeah. He sat down with me and called me out for uh, my Aunt Glizzy interview mentioning Bandman. It's mm. just... It is, is what it is. When you have a difference with somebody, I learned to use that as content. Yeah. Come sit down. Let's talk, bro. Like, everything don't got to be a shoot, shoot, bang out, fight. Everything don't have to be that. Then you got a problem with me? Come sit down on my couch, nigga. Let's chop it up. Yeah. Tell me how I'm a fuck, nigga. Because people like watching debates anyway. Facts. That's Come right. Come sit down. Everything don't got to be that. Like, you got to, we got to learn to turn this shit into content or money or a positive. Yeah. 
Like, everything don't got to be that. And that's one thing I'm learning. Like, nigga, she used to get to my skin. Seeing, <laughs> niggas, in, seeing niggas in the comments calling, oh, he, you this, you that, you this, you that. Come on. Especially if it's somebody with stat, with, a, yeah. with stature. Come sit down Come sit down and tell me why you think that. We don't got to... We don't got to hurt each other. Let's have that conversation. Let's have a conversation. People love seeing people go off on each other or debates or... Yeah. People love that. When it comes to sport debates, because, I, I, again, I already know you, you're a big sports guy. Uh-huh. Um, what's your favorite sports debate show right now? Uh, I like Gilbert Arenas. Okay. I like, uh, pa, uh, That's hard. I like Paul George shit. Okay. Uh, Playoff P. I like his, uh, his podcast. Man, I'm hurt. I'm hurt, Shannon. I'm hurt, Shannon Sharp left Skip. That was my shit. Yeah. Uh, f- uh, fir- uh, first take. I oh, got you. Um, uh, I mean, undisputed. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was my that, the chemistry between them two was mm-hmm. uh was was the, was the shit. Uh, but right now I'm on I'm on, I'm on different different podcasts. The who, Gilbert Arena shit is cool. Who do you think should replace Shannon? Some people say Wayne might replace him. Nah, we don't want to see Wayne. Yeah, I don't want to see Wayne. Wayne, my favorite rapper. Then they said, um, who who else they had right there? Recently, they saying was a good candidate to. Uh, that, uh, he said he said he wanted Charles Barkley. That would have been. I don't know. I don't think Charles Barkley uh, know enough about football though. Yeah. Damn man. W- what you think about Mace and uh, uh, Killer Cam show? I like what they doing. Um, I don't tap in every day. Yeah. But I like what they doing. Yeah. I like what they doing. But I, I'm I'm more like hearing sports. Debates by like people in that like that that did it. Yeah, but Cameron was hella good in basketball. But I'm saying like Mace was too, right? Yeah, Danny I think both. Mace was as well. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. yeah. Mace or something. Not saying they not, but it's just like I I rather just like, now I rather just hear from the NBA players. Got gotcha. you because they they like they been there. Now, um, a man, the kicker from the Colts that had his own show. Um, oh, Pat, Pat Ma- McAfee. McAfee, crazy deal. He just crazy um, deal. Man, he didn't got half the staff from ESPN Fire. <laughs> hey, they cleaned up shop to get him. Uh, Jalen Rose, yep. um, Vince Carter, yeah, uh, Keyshawn, what, Keyshawn Johnson. Was it Van Gundy? Yep. Stan, uh, not Stan, Ma- Jeff Van Gundy. Van Gundy, yep. <laughs> to, to get him over there. But Pac, see, he got his pocket. I told you, man. Like, what was it? Like a hundred million. Something crazy. Joe Rogan type. Man. man. So it's Content King, so because music, I know you moved away from it, so you. Ooh, done. This may be my last year in music. I think okay. I think I'm gonna wrap it up this year. Uh, now, if somebody come to me with a Michael Jackson type of guy, yeah, somebody who's just undeniable, already have his having his own wave. I don't gotta create it. I don't gotta put you know. I don't gotta put no fire behind it. All I gotta do is is do what I do. Yeah, that's the, okay. But just f- signing an artist that I like and trying to make that shit work. Nah. Cause like, do you are you still working with Rob Four Nine? I'm in a I'm in I'm in a partnership. Gotcha. I'm in a partnership. I'm in a partnership with it, yes. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Now what about the kid that you spent all that money and bailed him, got him out of jail? Yeah, hey, hey, he went back to jail. <laughs> Damn. How, how much did you spend? Man, probably total maybe like a hundred, a hundred twenty. Shit. Yep. Gone. And me and Birdman was supposed to link up together and uh partner on him. Mm. But he couldn't leave he couldn't leave the uh state. So you know how New Orleans is. You stuck in your hood. New Orleans last year was the it was the murder capital. New Orleans was. Damn. New Orleans, uh Louisiana was the murder capital. When St. You, Louis, I think Memphis were behind. Um When you hear those when you when you hear them getting arrested again and knowing the money that you spent, how does that feel with you? Um <clears throat> That's a lot of money, hundred thousand. It's just like that's why I'm in real estate now. Yeah, Even real estate's not going. They're not going to let me down. Them fix and flips. Yeah, it's not going to let me down. So it's just like with rappers, it's 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 low. It's high risk, low reward. Mm. It's like throwing a needle in a haystack. Like in rap, it's so hard to blow now. Not saying we can't do it. It's artists that go viral on my shit, like the OT guy, the Mexican guy, the D babies. This is a lot of. Rappers right now who going viral on my shit, that's that's going crazy. It could be done, but it's just like the fans have so much control now when they know that. Yeah, like the fans know. Um, and yeah, when he went back to jail, I was like, man, this shit. Like, I knew better though. Damn, hundred k gone, shit. But um, I do got five projects with him that's on streaming. Okay. So people stream the shit out of that dude. 
And speaking of that, saying that the fans got control, uh-huh. we know this year NBA Youngboy dropped the album. Yep. Him and Dirk was going back and forth. Then Dirk dropped the album. Mm-hmm. And then Gutta, Gutta, Gunna dropped the album that outdid both of theirs. Yep. Like, what, what was your thought process on things like that? People pick and choose. Hmm. People pick and choose. Uh, I mean, people pick and choose. And when you got a female audience like Gunna, you're not going to ever fall off. Gunna has a large female audience. Yeah. Females don't care about street shit. Females like snitches, weirdos. Whoever got if the you money. got motion or money, females are fucking with it. Yeah. So uh, shout out to Gunner for having that female fan base. Now, if it, if, it, if it was the other way around and he had a large male audience, it wouldn't have worked out. But he has a large female audience. Females run the world. Look at how mm. many women are out here. The female rappers are going crazy right now. They're running hip hop right now. Because they're so, uh, they're themselves. Mm. Male rappers are insecure. You know, uh, look at look at Sexy Red showing off her uh, uh, the bottom of her feet and just being who she is and showing all her flaws and like that's what Kodak Black and NBA YoungBoy gave us. They they showed us their flaws and we grew to love those flaws because why we had those same flaws. Yeah, female rappers are like that. They show their flaws. Um, they're not insecure. And a lot of these male rappers are really really insecure and they try to come off as perfect. Mm-hmm. And when you try to come off as perfect, it's not genuine. It doesn't look genuine anymore. So that's why I feel like the female rap game is taking over. Look at Glorilla. Yeah. Like, they're all showing their flaws. They're all exposing themselves. Glorilla's laughing at herself about having a little ass. Yeah. And she's making it a joke. She's not running from it. She's laughing at herself. Ice Spice laughing at herself. Um, they're just being themselves. Um, in male rap, you don't really get that. It's not fun no more. Everybody's mad. Everybody's angry. Everybody wants to fight. Everybody wants to kill. Mm. Um, it's it's not fun no more. Um, Fifteen years ago, it was fun. You still had Ludacris, the Ti's, the you had a balance. You had the Gucci Mane's if you wanted that. You had the the Jeezys if you wanted the trap. You had the Lil Wayne's if you wanted the a little bit of everything. Nowadays, it's is, is really no balance. Not saying that um, you can't go listen to a Smino or. A, a J. Cole or a Kendrick, it is a balance of music, but what's running shit is all, it's one, it's one-sided. It's yeah. all drill, kill, kill, kill. Um, so that's why I feel like um, the female rappers are running shit right now. They brought the partying continue. back. Yeah, they that bringing the everything, time. they bringing fun shit back. Yeah. They bringing fun shit back. Booty hole brown. <laughs> like, you you a dad now, you got a little girl. Yeah. If your girl daughter was a teenager right now listening to that music, how would you feel? Um, I wouldn't feel no way. I just feel like the best thing to be with to the best way to to be a a father these days and these times is just to be honest with them. Yeah, let sure. them know like, look, if you have sex, you could catch this. You could have a baby. You could do this. It's just be a hundred percent honest with kids. Don't hide nothing from them. Yeah, because when you hide something from them, they're gonna search for it. That's true. So um, I wouldn't feel no way if she listened to that music. It's entertainment at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But you got to know what's reality. You got to know shit real. And um, I don't, oh, man, um, I don't want my daughter to be in, in I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, my daughter could chase any dream she want to chase. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, you look at it like, we know when, when it come to rapping, with drill, if you the the biggest gangster in the room, if yeah. you got like you the biggest gangster, somebody gonna test that gangster. For sure. Now with female rap, they're they're acting like the biggest hoes in the room. Yeah. And then now somebody like we saw with YK Osiris and Sookie, somebody kind of test that hoism, and now he's looked at as a yeah. pedophile or weird. Yeah. When. Yeah, yeah. She just um, told him I fucked the shit out of you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. how do you feel about that? And you know, on that side of female rap of, I'm going to okay. tell you about my pussy and my booty hole. I'm going to do all of this stuff. Don't you try it. I mean, that shit been around since Lil' Kim and them. And yeah. um, who's the girl that, uh, uh, my neck, my back? Yeah, um, uh, Khalid. K- Khalid, that shit been around for, for, for 20, 30 years. Yeah. That shit been around for a minute. This ain't nothing new. Yeah. It's not nothing new at all. Uh, I just feel like, with, like I said, with kids, they got to know what's real and what's not mm. and what to what to look up to. Um, it, it's a lot of, 
um, it's a lot of my girl. She don't keep up with celebrities, but she knows that song. Yeah, and she knows the lyrics to it. Um, but because she knows the lyrics to it, does that mean she's a whore? No, she may just like the song, right? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It just depends on how you look at it. Um. Uh. I just, I don't know. It's all good. Now, I, I, I do want to end with this. Um, Kodak Black had been catching a little bit of heat. Yeah. For jumping on a feature with 6 yeah. 9 Right. Million dollar bag. Um, Boosie, of course, spoke out. Yeah. Um, you know, he's always advocate for the street. How do you feel about Kodak doing that feature with 6 9 Um, I don't feel no way. I feel like it's a business. I feel like. Um, you're doing your job. He said it in the record. Um, he kind of like threw slick shots at him in the record. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I would understand where Boosie comes from because that's his, that's his business model. That's his, that's his. I don't even want to call it a gimmick. That's who he is. Yeah. Um, but man, I, is that selling your soul? I, I don't know. But a million dollars is a lot, a lot of, of money. fucking money, and none of us have a million dollar check in front of us telling us to do something that may be, uh, I don't want to say against our morals, um, but it ain't like, see, Boosie said that 20 million, he, he'd go, he'll suck somebody's dick. Yeah. Uh, but to a, mil, a million dollars to rap on a record, I don't see too many rappers saying no to that. I don't know. I, I don't see too many rappers saying, do you? I, I can't see it. Le legitimate? I mean, you would have just approached it just like Kodak did. I don't see too off. many rappers saying no to a million dollars. And a lot of these, I don't, I'm not counting Kodak's plot pockets or none of these dudes' pockets. None of these rappers are as rich as you think they are. Mm. They got they got friends in their pocket. They got family in their pocket. Uh, half of these deals they're doing are bad deals. Legal um, fees. Legal fees. <laughs> um, the, the drugs these people are doing. Uh, maybe he maybe he needed that million and he said it. He got mm. a daughter on the way. Or he got a he just had a daughter or he got kids. So that's him. Yeah. A million dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money to turn down. Well, okay, so you turn it down, then what? Then you go around telling everybody you turn down a million dollars, then you looking like the dummy. <laughs> for sure, for some niggas that ain't got the money themselves. So it's just like, I don't feel like that hurt his legacy. I don't think that hurt his career. I think Kodak is a is a legend where he's from. I feel like the shit he's done in the street and his community is stamped. He gives back to his community. Um, he uh, takes care of his people. Yeah. He's documented. I know a lot of people in, in Broward County that you notice, ain't no, have you seen any Zoe say anything bad about it? No. Nah. No. No, no, none of them, right? Right, that's true. So nobody in his community has anything bad to say about it. So, I mean, he 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 does for his community. Um, but I, like I said, I get where Boosie come from because that's been his business model. But let somebody offer Boosie a, a million dollars to do something. He may come up with an excuse on why he did do it. Right, that's true. So everybody, like I said, back to where the Errol Spence shit, everybody got something to say until you in that box. When you in that box, what you gonna do? You don't know. Mm. When I when I was broke, I used to say, "Man, I ain't buying no designer. I ain't getting no jewelry." I said that three interviews yeah, ago. I, hey, I remember. Hey, remember? I, I said that three interviews ago. I wasn't getting no jewelry, and I got jewelry on. Hey, you went from no jewelry to a little small chain to a bigger chain. Yeah. And look at we now. Look at us now. Yeah, man, I, I had to get it, man. Shout out to Izzy in New York. Yeah, NYC Luxury. So, so um, are those moist nights? Nah, this is real emeralds. <laughs> these are these are, these are real emeralds. Um, real emeralds. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Ice Champ for the Cuban, not the little Cuban that uh, uh, you know the big Cuban. Yeah. Um, but shout out to the Ice Champ. This is about two fifty. Okay. Uh, but this wasn't on no trying to be cool shit. I really don't wear it. Um, I really only wear these to like basketball tournaments for like my youth team. Yeah. Um, 99 overall is the basketball team name. Yeah. And uh, just for recruitment recruitment pieces. You know, hey, I'm in sports too. You like so. Dion. Yeah. You covered in that prime time. Yeah. I just go, because kids love <laughs> that, that type that, of yeah, shit. They do. They get so this is not for rap shit. You don't see me in the club wearing it, doing shit out of my character. You know me. Yeah. Um, there ain't nobody see you in the club, period. Yeah. So you don't see me around people trying to flex jewelry. 
Um, and I'm not, you know, shout out to her. She hella, she hella jewelryed up over there. Uh, but that's just not my forte. I like to be super, super low key. Yeah. Cause this brings nothing but bad, uh, bad energy. Yeah. I mean, it brings positive too. It brings, it starts conversations. What do you do? Who are you? You must do YouTube. You must be a rapper. It brings positive <laughs> shit. But for me, is this for you sports? Sell dope. Yeah. <laughs> but this it brings a lot of negative shit too. Yeah. People want it for clout. They want to sell it, melt it down, make money. Um, but you know me, man. I'm. This is just for sports and recruitment uh, purposes. Well, I tell you what, man. Shout out to you on your journey. Podcast on the way. Hey, we're going to be the champions here. You said you're going to knock Bosco out. And yeah, man. I'm going to get him out of there. Out of there. I'm going to get him out of there. Um, shout out to Mogul Media going crazy. Yeah, man. Uh, I see you going through Detroit. I see you doing it. You're doing it the right way. Uh, getting like all the all the the uh, the drug lords. Yeah. Going back, the, getting the Dex Osama shit. I watched that shit. Yeah. Was dude high? What is, his eyes was shot red. He was out of there. I was, he was on something. Cause you didn't do that interview, didn't you? I was right there, Mo. Shout out to my homegirl, Danny D. Girl. Okay. She, she he felt they was cool. He oh. felt more comfortable with her doing it. Right. Okay. So, yeah, that was dope. That was yeah. dope. Yeah. Shout out to Detroit. I love what Detroit is doing. Um, like I said, I remember my first time in Detroit was with you. Yeah, that's when I you think somebody that. was getting married, right? Me. You were getting married. It was my bachelor party. Yeah, 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 yeah. You was getting married because yeah. y'all did the whole bus. Um, party bus. The party bus. Yeah. I wouldn't. I didn't go. Yeah, uh, but can. I was there. I think I stayed. We was in the same Airbnb, right? Yeah, that's when you interviewed Dex. When I we interviewed was, Dex we on Damn, yeah. man. Cash yeah. dog came, didn't she? I think. She, yep, she did. She yep. did. Um, I probably won't never get was, that interview now. Man, yeah, she blocked me three, years, <laughs> five years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, she ain't. She ain't fucking with the kid. But uh, yeah, shout out to Detroit too. Um, that they were a city that was slept on for a long time. Yeah, people said they wrapped off beat. People said the 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 the, the buffs was ugly. Now everybody's doing it. And all the chicks rapping like Vezo. And all the chicks rapping like Vezo. Yep. So uh, shout out to Vezo. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to you. And um, until next time. Hey, Sean Cotton. Peace. Peace.